a lot of the times our color sensors during FLL competitions or whatever circumstances don't work because the lighting is different or what the robot sees as white maybe at home is different from maybe your friend's house or maybe a competition venue or something like that. This is a major problem that most FLL teams face and a lot of beginning programmers also face. However, there is a way to overcome this challenge and that's via what we're going to be doing in this video today. So how does the robot know what is white? If we look at our robot and we go to port view, we can manually see what white is. Like for, for example here, we can see that white is in 100, right? But let's just say I turn off my lights here, right? We make it significantly darker. Um, we can see that our light is actually going to be darker than it is before. Our reflected light intensity, which means our um, reflected light intensity is in turn going to be lower. For example, now it's 90. How does the robot know this? And how can we make the robot learn essentially what light it's under? Well, we can use something called a calibrate, which is basically every single time the robot, you run a program, the robot essentially learns what the reflected light intensity of white is and also what black is. So it can find basically every single value there is. So if you run it over a black line, it instinctively knows that it's a black line. So under any lighting circumstances, you run your calibrate program and your robot knows precisely what black is and white is under those lighting conditions. Let's start off by writing a calibrate program. Basically in a calibrate program, there are two different types of values you need. One is the maximum type and one is the minimum uh, reflected light intensity. So uh, we programmers abbreviated as high, HI, and low with LO. Um, you may remember from previous episodes that these were also the variables that we had. This is because we saved the values that the color sensor has to a variable in order to run every single other program. Therefore, we need to set up our variables. So of course, you want to go to your variables block, pick out your two variables, and just write them. Um, I'm writing mine under the basic line follow, um, which you can, which we'll rename later. Um, I'm going to change my program to calibrate and set up your two variables. So you can add high and add low. So actually here I have a mid variable set up, um, which we, I'll keep for now and potentially we'll use it later. But you know what? Why not? Set up a mid variable. So this is what your program should look like right now. You set up your high, you set up your low, set up your mid uh, for your values to be plugged in later. Write them all as zero for now. Next, what we want to do is we want to measure the reflected light intensity coming up from the robot. So when I put it uh, under black, for example, we want it to show the low value. When we put it over a white surface, we want it to show the high value. So of course you go to measure and not color, not ambient, but the reflected light intensity and make sure it's on the correct port. And then you can plug this in to your high value. If you want it to be, um, if you want this to plug it in to your high value. So I'm just going to put a comment block over here. This is going to be uh, reading for high. And it's always a good idea when programming to add some comment blocks just so you don't get confused in your own program because that's kind of um, disorganized and it's going to slow you down quite a bit. Now remember that you won't actually be able to read the values in here. So you're actually going to just add a weight block or more importantly add a weight for break button bumped. Now, the reason why I use the break button bumps, especially in our calibrate programs, is because you want to be able to control when you're going to be saying, hey, robot, look, this is the white, this is the black value, this is high, this is low. You want to be able to put it over your line, press the button, put it over a white, press the button, etc. So we're just going to set it to the center button to move forward. Now, I'm actually going to do something really quickly, and I'm going to go to my... Um, my tools, and I'm actually going to make a my block out of this uh, weight block. Uh, you might be wondering, well, why would I do that, right? Because every single time you actually go to the weight block and you have to change it, 
believe it or not, because you use the wait for break button so many times in programming, it's just a lot easier to make a my block out of it. So let's make a my block out of it. Uh, I'm just going to call it wait for bumped and we're going to add the break buttons in there. Perfect. So now we can simply go to our tab and you have your wait for bumped. Be sure to name it again, something that you know um, and add a proper icon just so you don't get confused. So now that you've made this my block, uh, drag it in front. The reasoning behind it is because you're having your setup variables and after you set up your variables, you want to confirm that you've set it up uh, and make sure you place it over. So uh, I'm gonna add another comment block actually, but this time I'm gonna use the one in the advanced tab just to make it a little bit different from the ones up here. And I'm just gonna say, uh, put um, robot over uh, white area. And you might think, well, isn't this block kind of useless? Like, why do I need it here? It's because we're going to come back here and we're going to display text. But I'm going to use this as a place placeholder for now. So feel free um, to do the next part. Uh, I'm just going to copy it over. And we're going to do the same thing on black. And we're, of course, we're going to change the variable to low. You don't want it over writing the same variable over and over. And lastly, just to confirm, we're going to add a wait for break button bumped. And now you basically have your calibrate. Let's see how it works. I just remember that really quickly, um, go into your wait, uh, wait for brick uh, bumped and change this to bumped because this way you can actually be able to bump the button instead of as soon as you push it down, uh, it's going to skip for all the rest of it. That was my bad. Just correct this, and whenever you use uh, any weight blocks in a row, make sure that you have it in bumped rather than pressed. If you remember correctly, uh, after we press into our calibrate, we have three button presses. The first one is going to be over white, the second one over black, and the third one to confirm. So for a quick test of our calibrate program, first of all, put yours over white, press it, and then that's your first one, put it over black, press it one more time, and lastly, don't hit the third bump because we're actually going to go back to the computer and check our values really quickly. Now, with your program still running and your button's not pressed, so you're still in the program, uh, we can hover over, of course, these to check our values. So the first one we saw was our high variable, which is 100. That's pretty much normal. As long as your high value is around a 70 to an 100, as long as it's above 50, you're fine, basically. I'd, I'd say the safe area is about 80-ish, but 100 is a decent value. Uh, and the last, the next one is going to be our low value. Let's see what it is. It's a 1, which, of course, is the other end of the spectrum. It's completely fine as well. This means our Calibrate essentially works pretty easily. Now, for the on-screen text portion, I would like you, before you watch my next video, to try and write one yourself. Of course, in the next video, we'll be covering the basics of how to put this text on screen and how to display it in a way that is clear and easy, and also how you can double check it on your actual brick and not on the computer. So to summarize, this Calibrate is very, very easy to write. It's very quick and simple. It's decently reliable, provided that you have your um, robot and color sensor positioned over perfect white and perfect black. And besides that, it works pretty well for its desired purpose. However, in programming, you'll find that often, of a lot of times, you're going to have a much easier solution to a problem, not in terms of writing, but just in terms of user friendliness. Until next time, bye-bye.